So the Wall Street Wizards with their crystal balls and tarot cards, they had a little surprise for us. They jacked up the odds of a September interest rate cut to a whopping 80%. Mind you, this happened even as inflation stubbornly refuses to play nice and stick to the Fed's holy grail of that 2% inflation target. It's like watching a bull in a china shop, except that China is our economy and the bull is inflation. My name is David Quintieri, and I have been looking into this information for well over a decade, bringing you videos each and every day. I am knee deep in the trenches, getting rid of all that jargon, Phillips curves, and things that do not matter, and only bringing you that which counts. That's why I really do appreciate you being here today. I want to remind you of something. Timing is everything. Just like the best time to have your espresso is right after you wake up and not right before bed. The timing of a rate cut depends on how quickly information inflation slows and how our job market evolves. Well, according to the chief economist for Comerica Bank, Bill Adams, if we see a softer employment picture and further declines in the inflation rate, the Fed might just start cutting interest rates as early as this fall. You did hear me correctly. That's what he's saying, and that's what the market has been pricing in. Do you understand this? We're talking about a massive interest rate cut or differential from where we are today, and they are even still at the Federal Reserve talking about increasing rates. These two do not match up. Hold your horses. Before we start planning our next investment moves, remember that the bar for a rate cut is as high as my caffeine needs on a Monday morning, okay? Because the New York Fed President John Williams doesn't even see the need to cut interest rate this year. It's like we were told inflation's transitory. I mean, really, it's hard to believe now. We don't know who to believe. That's the situation we are in, okay? And don't get me started on the market expectations because they're already counting their chickens before they're hatched, pricing in multiple cuts for 2023 that would take the Fed's benchmark rate, the Fed funds rate, okay, down to the target 4.25 to 4.5%. Like, what are, what are they talking about? I mean, this is like expecting to win the lottery when you haven't even bought a ticket yet. They're, the Federal Reserve is doing one thing. The Federal Reserve is saying one thing. And yet the market is saying, no, this is what's going to happen. Now, the market might be correct. But where are they basing that information on? Nobody, absolutely nobody at the Federal Reserve is saying that, even hinting towards that. And so they might be suggesting, okay, that was enough. But none of them are saying we're going to cut rates. So if they are going to cut rates, what is this? all in relation to. Are you saying that there's going to be a recession? Are you saying that the bank crisis is going to get worse and companies are going to fail and mass layoffs are going to ensue and therefore you need to cut interest rates? Why else would they? That's what I want to know from you. Put it in the comments below. Why in the world is the market pricing in rate cuts, significant rate cuts, this year if things aren't so bad? That's what the data is showing. So you tell me. Now, here's the real kicker. You know, you've got Paul McCulley. He's the former PIMCO managing director, okay? Big, big financial company. Currently, he's, you know, working at Cornell. Anyway, he said that they're going to sound quite hawkish until they're sure that we have hit that point where they need to be. And this is like your mom refuses to believe that you've cleaned your room until she's inspected every nook and cranny. I mean, that's kind of a silly explanation, but that's what it really is. And I'm bringing you these anecdotes to try to make it simple and try to keep it light. Here's a little nugget for you, okay? The April CPI, okay, Consumer Price Inflation Report, was at, you know, as mixed as my morning smoothie, okay? Which I really do love. Core inflation, which includes food and energy costs, held steady at 5.5%. But the sticky 
CPI, measuring prices that don't move a lot, was only slightly lower. And you can see that it's not all sunny skies on the horizon. You got to understand here, there are many different aspects of inflation. We got to realize that these are always going to be in flux. In Canada, the rate, I believe, went, it basically was higher than expectations. So, of course, they're starting to freak out. They're saying, wait a minute, is inflation picking up again? Well, you look at food prices, they continue to go up. Energy prices don't really go down ever. And you look at, you know, housing prices are considerably higher. Rents are going up just over the past few years, just in the past few years. Rent prices have gone up something like 40% in some of these major cities. That is extreme. But you look at the data and it won't show 40% increase because they use these muted ways of calculating to, you know, to do this on purpose, to make things seem that they're better than they actually are. Okay. And you look at this core inflation's annual pace is still well above that Fed's holy grail, as I said, 2% target. It's like being on a diet and realizing that you're still gaining weight. Those numbers need to go down before we see any change in the Fed's monetary policy and their rhetoric too. Okay, like the diet example, it's like going on the scale. You're like, well, I didn't lose weight yet, but you know, I, I can I can eat that cheat meal. No, you can't. Get back to work get back on the treadmill, lift those weights, and let's make this happen. And then when you get to where you want to be, your goals, then you can decide what you want to do. Okay, but not until then. Don't celebrate early. All right. Before the CPI release, markets have been pricing in about a 20% chance of a rate hike at the June FOMC meeting. After that meeting, it has plummeted to 8.5%. So that's it. The market does not believe rate hikes are coming as of June. That's it. End of story. Now, that's what we got to discuss today and look at. And I think it's really important that we stress we don't know what's going to happen. But this data has popped up. I wanted to bring this to you real nice and easy, light and fun to talk about a very serious issue. So you as the individual, you've got to prepare the best you can. You've got to make sure your portfolio isn't all in one thing because we can get smacked right here. The Federal Reserve, we know at the same time, is going to try and create inflation. They certainly have done a great job over the last few years. So we want to position accordingly. We want to hold real assets and we want to hold on to if you're invested in stocks, 401k, all that stuff. You want to make sure that you are not overexposed to the riskiest of those. You want to have a balance. Okay, really important stuff. So if you don't manage your own money, you got to expand and look at this uh, and really understand that, you know, for some people, what we look at and what, what we talk about here is, is you know, having those steady and stable things, ask the right questions, and uh, you got to do that. It's your own, it's your own due diligence. Okay. Did you appreciate this information? If you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.